Hi, welcome to Troubadour's videos. Today we're going to install and test the world's first sub-ambient cooling setup for memory, Corsair's ICE T30. Corsair's ICE T30 sub-ambient cooling system is designed to be an exclusive fitment for the Corsair Dominator and Dominator GT memory modules. The specific memory we're going to be using for this cooling test today are Corsair's Dominator GTs running at 2000 MHz Time ends of 78720 at 1.65 volt. You will also notice a temperature sensor mounted on each piece of memory. This is so we can monitor the cooling effect the ICE T30 system has on each module. Each of the temperature sensors are going to be providing real time data to a Coulance TMS200 thermal interface controller. This controller is cutting edge and has the ability to provide data logs and charts for easy comparisons and diagnostics. With the Dominator GTs mounted on the motherboard, we've included the stock air fan cooler for the Dominator GTs. We're going to be monitoring these temperatures for a 30 minute period of intense gameplay and we'll provide a comparison later in the video. Let's have a look at the components that come with the ICE T30 installation kit. Here is the main assembly of the ICE T30. This comprises of a thermoplate, a TEC, water jacket, hose barbs and a cooler cover plate a thermoelectric heat pump and humidity sensor controller board, thermal pad, thermal grease, half inch to three eight hose adapters, three eight and half inch hose clamps, replacement screws, two hex or allen wrenches, and some adhesive clips for basic cable management. With the motherboard removed from the PC, let's start by removing the stock air coolers from the memory. In order to prepare these three memory modules for this installation, let's go ahead and remove those modules from the motherboard. We need to remove the three Allen screws from the top of the memory module, so using the supplied Allen or hex wrench, carefully remove these screws. It doesn't take a lot of torque, so be very careful because these are fine threads, you don't want to strip any. With all the screws removed, carefully remove the copper heatsink. Now to remove the cover, carefully remove these four screws. Again, these screws are very fine threads, don't need a lot of torque to remove these, so be very careful. With all these screws removed, gently lift up the cover and lift it off. To remove the water block from the thermal plate you will need to remove these four screws. These screws are under spring tension so be very careful not to lose any components. When you separate the water block be very careful not to damage the TEC. And here it is. This is the TEC. This is the heart of the thermoelectric pump principle. Before we can start installing this system onto the memory, we need to ensure that all the components are clean. This includes cleaning both surfaces of the thermal plate and the base of the water block. Before we can install the thermal pads, we'll also need to remove the temperature sensor off the thermal plate. The thermal pad is protected by two plastic shields, a clear shield and a checkered shield. I usually remove the cleared shield first, install the pad and remove the checkered shield later. Next install a blob of grease. Now install the sensor back on the thermal plate but leave it slightly loose so you can move that around to install it in between memory modules. Install your bare memory modules back onto the motherboard. As you can see here, we have our temperature sensors for the memory modules and our ambient temperature sensor to check the inside PC case temperature. Carefully position your thermal plate over your memory modules. 
For this we will only be installing a screw in either end of the memory module. Also notice the thermal sensor that we've installed on the cold plate to monitor its temperature. Loosely install the six replacement screws into the memory modules. Now for final tightening sequence, tighten the center module first and then tighten on diagonal opposites. Now these are very very fine threads so again do not over tighten. These threads do not need a lot of torque to tension down. Using the remainder of your thermal paste apply 50% to the top and 50% to the bottom of the TEC. Again this is extremely viscous paste so try and spread it out as best you can across the surface of the TEC. Now install the TEC on the thermal plate and always ensure that the red lead is on the left of the TEC for best cooling. The next step is critical to ensure we're trapping the TEC between the thermal plate and the water block. The tensioning hardware will need to be configured as shown here. For this installation you will need to pre-assemble these using your black screw, plastic washer, plastic standoff and tension spring. Pre-assemble these before installing the water block. Lower and line up your water block with the four remainder holes on your thermal plate. Next install your four pre-assembled tension spring assemblies. Tighten up your tension spring assemblies again using a diagonally opposite pattern. Finally install your water cooler cover. As you notice here we've already installed our hoses on the water block just a little easier to attach the hoses to it rather than wrestle that about while that particular configuration is mounted to your memory modules. Install your hose clamps, little bit of cable management, just tidy up a few cables there and let's install this back in the PC. An important thing to note is if you have to adjust the hose bobs be sure to re-tighten these allen screws prior to priming the system. With everything installed back in the case I gotta admit the uh, ICE T30 system definitely complements the looks of the X58 classified motherboard. In the top of the case we mounted two control modules. The top control module you see there is the TEC heat pump controller for the ICE T30 system. Bottom control module that's the TMS200 from Coulons that's what we're going to be using for logging the temperatures and checking the performance of the Dominator ICE T30 system today. Here is the initial benchmark. These are the temperatures from the Dominator GTs running with stock air fans or air coolers. Ambient temperature in the case is 26 degrees C. Module 1, Module 2 and Module 3 are reading 32, 32 and 31 degrees C respectively. Fantastic results coming off the ICE T30 system. Ambient in the case is 27 degrees. Coat plate temperature 14 degrees and module 1, 2 and 3 are 15, 14 and 16 degrees respectively. But what if I want my temperatures colder? Simply flick the switch to the opposite position to bypass which turns off all the humidity sensors and whacks the TEC with full voltage. Let's see exactly what kind of temperatures we can get off the TEC under bypass conditions. Whoa! Look at that! 7 degrees C in the cold plate, ambient 25, cold plate 7 and memory 1, 2 and 3 8, 7 and 10 degrees respectively. Absolutely wicked cold extreme temperatures coming off the TEC. Now one word of warning, although the temperatures are great, bypassing the humidity sensor can and will lead to extreme buildups of condensation in your system. Just for fun and to show you guys exactly what can happen, we tried it and here are the results. Thanks again for watching Troubadour's videos. As always, feel free to subscribe if you wish to stay up to date with the latest and greatest in gaming and PC hardware. If you've got any PC questions, feel free to swing by our forums at www.troubadourforums.com. Thanks guys and take care.